Um, Carl Burns is here to talk to us with some more nutrition facts and fiction. Cara is a licensed veterinary technician with a master's degree in both physiology and a master's degree in psychology. She's the founder and president of the Academy of Veterinary Nutrition Technicians. She teaches nutrition courses around the world, is a consultant for La Fiba Company. She is the director of nursing for Brief Media and the editor of Veterinary Team Brief. She's an independent nutrition consultant featured on the cover of the Veterinary Technician Journal and the NAFTA Journal. She's North American Veterinary Conference Technician Speaker of the Year in both 2013 and 2016. She is the 2010 NAFTA Veterinary Technician of the Year and the 2011 Dr. Franklin Lowe Lecturer. So please join me in welcoming the very accomplished Cara Burns. All right. Okay, how are we doing out there? All right, good. Um, don't worry, we're not going to do that each session, um, but, but we will probably have to stop close to time uh, if you want to come back to, to get rescanned. So, um, and that if is a, a I know you're going to want to come back, right? Please? Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk about some myths, right? Fact or fiction. Um, my um, conflict of interest disclosure, I'm a consultant, so I consult with um, lots of different places. So, um, so those are listed up there. We're going to talk about grain-free. Are you guys getting grain-free questions? Okay, all right. I saw some exasperated looks, so you're getting a lot of these questions. Okay. Let's start by saying there to date. So today is what? February 5th, 2018. Okay, to date, there is no nutritional foundation for grain-free grain -free products. So let's look at that a little more closely. What is grain-free? Why do owners love grain-free? Why do they think their pet has to have it? Okay, so because it's a thing on the human side where they... Um, are avoiding gluten. Yes, thank you for that. It's always those things on the human side, right, that gets them fired up, which, is, which isn't bad, okay, until they drive us crazy with some things. But, um, but yes. They have what marketing? Is that like good marketing? Marketing in the um, nutrition? profession or in the nutritional category of products? Oh, if you have good marketing, your life is very good. Yeah, I won't, um, I agree with everything that's being said. I might not, um, so I'm, you know, I, I might not say it, um, but yes, okay. So marketing is huge and every company markets their product. Owners assume, because of what you guys were just saying, that grain-free products are more natural. They assume that they're carbohydrate-free, right? There's no grains, there's no carbs. Is that true? No, of course not. Yes. Right. That. <laughs> Right, nutrient-free is sawdust, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, they assume that it's good. They assume that there's less health problems, such as allergies, if it's grain-free. And so one of the misperceptions is that whole grains, grains are fillers, right? They just put it in there to you know, fill up the ingredient panel. No. A filler means that there's little or no nutritional value. Are, are there, is there nutritional value to grains? Oh yeah, absolutely. Whole grains give us some vital nutrients, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids. Some grains provide protein. Maybe easier for the pet to digest those vegetable proteins than some animal proteins. 
So, yeah, I wouldn't say that grains are fillers. I would say that they're providing some vital nutrients. And greater than 90% of dogs and cats can utilize and digest nutrients from grains that are found in pet foods. The other 10% typically has some disease condition that's messing with, so it's malabsorption, maldigestion issues. It's not grain issues. So we mentioned grain-free is misleading, and that comes from marketing, advertising, absolutely. Owners read this where? Yeah, they see it on TV, they hear it on the radio, they read it on the internet, at the pet store, absolutely. It's being perpetuated, you're, you're absolutely right. So I'm here to tell you that grain-free is misleading. And it's not carbohydrate-free. Most grain-free diets still contain carbohydrates from sources which contain more carbohydrates than corn, right? Corn is one of those grains that people are like, oh my God, how can you, you're a bad owner, I'm gonna report you to the Humane Society because you feed something with corn in it. Corn, what do people think corn is? A filler. And why do they have that misperception? Okay, yep fructose corn syrup, yep, um, marketing, advertising. If you eat whole kernel corn, what happens? Yes, it comes out as whole kernel corn. Sorry, you guys are in veterinary medicine. This doesn't gross you out. Although people do, I know. Um, but corn in pet foods is ground. And pay no attention to that woman on the, on the stage. <laughs> it's ground and the nutrients from there are what is put into the pet food you know we're not just hucking corn and you know putting it in so it, a lot of it comes through in the manufacturing process so yeah grain free does not mean carbohydrate free Carbohydrates are one of our basic nutrients. It's one of the three that we get energy from. And dogs and cats need a variety um, of nutrients. If we look at grain-free diets, all the different grain-free products on the market, there are, each one of those has a different nutritional profile. And really, we're gonna see then that how that affects the carbohydrates and the other nutrients. So if we're, take, you know, if we're taking out carbohydrates, that diet is going to be mostly protein, mostly fat, with vitamins and minerals. It, it, that's what people are thinking that this is, and, and it's not. Grain-free diets, lower in carbs, we're going to have higher fat, higher calories, okay? Some grain-free products substitute with highly refined starches, like potatoes. Again, do you think that's what owners are thinking? They're thinking, most owners think potatoes are a grain. Not a car, <laughs> some of you guys are chuckling, but you know that's true, right? Yeah. And Okay, if we're seeing more things like potatoes, then we're not getting as many nutrients, definitely less fiber, and it is not cost efficient. So here's, here's the paradox, right? Here's the disconnect. They don't, owners don't want to pay for an expensive food that you recommend, but they'll pay for something that has no scientific evidence because they read it on the internet that isn't cost efficient. Can someone explain that to me? 
Mark, thank you, marketing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> One word. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So what I encourage us to do is educate them. They don't know that grain-free doesn't mean carbohydrate-free. Also in the grain-free products, some use beans, peas, and lentils. Those provide carbohydrates, but not necessarily better than some of the grains that are in our, our pet foods. And okay, which owner wants GI upset in their pet? Are they more willing to go with grain-free and risk GI upset? Some maybe. So grains cause food allergies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Food allergies and insensitivities are an abnormal response to a normal food or normal ingredient, okay? These are not common. So many of our owners come in and say, he's got a food allergy. Very, 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 very doubtful, okay? Because they're not common. Less than 1% of skin disease, and we see a lot of skin disease, is an actual food allergy. In fact, of all the allergies, less than 10% are food allergies. So, allergy to, so allergic to, to corn? No. Who, who made that diagnosis? Was there a board-certified dermatologist that you know, took that pet through an um, elimination trial? Or did they read on the internet that scratching is probably a corn allergy? Ha <laughs> ha! Right? I know what you guys are, are going through. Grain allergies are even less common. These food allergies, in dogs, it's typically the highest three are beef, chicken, and dairy. In cats, dairy, um, fish, and chicken. I believe it's chicken, not beef. So, you know, those common stereotypes, cats need milk? Nope. Uh, <laughs> cats love fish. Um, yep, that's one of the higher. If it was a true food allergy, that's one of the higher ones. But again, food allergies, you guys, are not common. So if they are diagnosed with a food allergy, it's typically the animal protein, as I said. Okay? That reflects the commonality of ingredients in pet foods. I mean, look at, try to find a novel protein today. It's nearly impossible. Now we're going to alligator and, um, you know, all these, <laughs> someone wants to make an anaconda diet. I'm like, wow, right? Because we, it's hard to find a novel protein. But typically, if it truly is a food allergy, it's to a protein, not to a grain. Grains cause, to, to your point, grains cause gluten intolerance. Celiac disease is an inherited human autoimmune disease, okay? Where um, associated uh, hypersensitivity to gluten proteins in wheat and related grains such as barley and rice. That's, that's been shown. Celiac disease in humans is absolutely a real thing. It is a disease condition. But in dogs, it is extremely, 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 one more, extremely <laughs> rare, and it's non-existent in cats to date. Now, I know researchers are out there looking for it. To date, there's only one family of inbred Irish setters, oh, is it in England or the Netherlands? Um, that is known to have manifested GI signs from consuming, consuming gluten. This, to date, is the only one. Celiac disease, except for in this family of Irish setters, does not exist in dogs or cats. Stay tuned. We will continue to look at this and look to find it in dogs. Um, but as of right now, that's the only f uh, family. 
you know, owners think if they have it, their pet has it. And let's flip that. They're, they care about their pets. They want to be educated. So let's educate them. You know, I'm sorry that you, know, that you are suffering with this, but this disease doesn't exist in, in animals or in dogs and cats. So let's educate them. All right, we are at time. I love these um, little ones, but they, they go so fast. Um, just so you guys know, there is no nutritional or scientific foundation as of February 5th, 2018. Maybe we'll have an update next year or even in a couple of months, okay? But as of right now, no. If you do have an owner, though, that absolutely positively wants to feed a grain-free diet, what do you guys do currently? Homemade? Okay, the grain-free. And that's kind of where I was going. If you have a brand or a product family that you guys love and recommend, and you've explained, educated on everything, but they still want to go grain-free, go with that company brand, whatever, that you know, you know their nutritional philosophy, and make that recommendation, okay? But make sure you know the research and everything behind it, and you can, um, you can give a, a, a recommendation. So, um, so I guess we start again in five minutes, or maybe at this point, three. Um, so thank you.